Alright, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Now we're gonna take a big step back and we're gonna start off simple. Um, we're gonna start off with a very simple assembly that we're gonna make. Uh, and I'm not gonna, I'm not really gonna upload any kind of parts or anything for it. It's very simple. You should be able to make it yourself. And if you can, and if you don't know how to make it, just uh, go back to the part series, watch it, and then make it yourself. Uh, but I do expect you to be able to make a simple assembly that I'm about to make. Um, I'm sorry, I, I do expect you to be able to make the parts that I'm about to use in this assembly. Uh, they're fairly straightforward. Um, Alright, so let's let's begin. Um, so the way you start a new assembly is again, you just start with the control N or just hit new. And instead of a part, just click assembly. Name it something that makes sense. I'm just going to call it uh, test assembly not text test assembly and I'm not really gonna number it because I know I'm not gonna make too many of them I'm probably just gonna make one so I don't really need to number it uh, data planes are off okay so this is the assembly environment uh, in the model tree right here we have um, uh, our main assembly and once we add in parts it's gonna show the parts uh, so let's let's assemble uh, this is this is the main area that you're gonna use when you want to bring in a new part uh, assemble and it's gonna give you a list uh, from your directory and the w and if you remember from the part series you go to manage session and you say select working directory whatever you have selected right here is where it's gonna go when you click assemble so you should set set up your assembly uh, I'm sorry you set up you should set up your working directory to be uh, where you saved all your parts and, and part files uh, and you know save the assemblies in the same uh, folder that's uh, that's just good practice not even practice I think that's the only way it works um, so yeah, I have these parts saved in here I'm gonna bring them in and uh, it, it's I, I don't know if it's standard practice but it's for me at least it works out well when I have a part in my assembly that's completely static uh, what that means is imagine you know um, uh, just just a table where you know if, you, if you're gonna have some kind of moving assembly you want to clamp it down on a table and you know see which parts move or something like that uh, that's probably a terrible example that I just gave you but what I'm trying to say is in Creo it's it's good practice for me at least it has been good practice to have at least one component that doesn't move and other components that kind of move from that component um, and in this case this is going to be that part that's not going to move at all even though I'm kind of moving it around what I mean is physically relative to other parts um, right now I'm just moving the uh, uh, things are I'll just do a little review of the shortcuts by the way you click the middle mouse button and you drag it and then you can move this around in 3d like this and if you want to move it linearly uh, you hold down shift and you middle mouse button click and then you can just move it you know across without rotating it too much around any axes um, uh, so that's that but let's let's begin so th I just brought this part in and this is gonna be our static part and then I'm gonna bring in another part and that's the linkage that I'm gonna try to connect uh, again these are the parts that are made already and and what we're gonna try to do here is uh, let me just turn on these datums uh, what we're gonna try to do here is we, we want to add this linkage uh, this link in this hole and have it rotate and that's it it shouldn't be able to do anything other than just rotate inside of this uh, link and the connection is called the pin connection so so let's let's just look at this uh, these these colorful things right here first so when you bring in a part it has all these arrows that means it has degrees of freedom uh, all these directions that you see here you have three degrees of freedom that are shown in a linear fashion so you can move up and down uh, sideways uh, inwards outwards and then you have these rotation rotational degrees of freedom like this it, it, you can rotate the part and, and, and you know do things with it and that, that right now it has six degrees of freedom I think or I don't know what, what you want to call it but I think it's six degrees of freedom um, and if you want you can just move it around with the with the middle uh, circular sphere click it drag it and then you can just move it around now 
Uh, this is a very simple assembly, uh, but if you're working with something w uh, like the one we showed you in the, I showed you in the, I don't know why I said we, but uh, <laughs> if, if you're working with something, uh, if you're working with something as large as the one I showed you in the introduction, um, you're gonna, you're gonna be kind of lost, uh, and what I mean by that is this is a fairly small part, and if you have a large assembly, if I zoom out, this is exactly how that part's gonna look. Uh, so it's, you're gonna have to zoom into the part, and you're gonna have a large assembly in the background, and it's gonna be kind of difficult to put things into perspective. Uh, and 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 uh, you can kind of remedy that by clicking this uh, right here, this window. What it does is it, it shows you a separate window, and it it kind of puts the spotlight on that small piece or any piece that you bring in. And you know it's it's kind of handy because you don't really have to go look for the part or try to zoom in uh, because you can just use this window as a second uh, environment for Creo where you can do things because you know it has all these uh, settings in this window as well. So it's it's a handy feature that I recommend using. But for now we don't really need to, so I won't. Um, so let's go into connections. Uh, we have we have this the, these menus right here, two menus. Um, there, there's there, there are a few in distinctions between them, uh, and I'll try to kind of properly explain what that is. Although it's kind of confusing, um, so let's click down this menu. We see a bunch of things like pin connections, slider, uh, uh, cylindrical, planar, uh, weld, ball connection, bearings, uh, six degrees. Of so this is these are what determine the behavior of the constraints that you put on something uh, so if you make a pin connection it's gonna behave like a pin and it's gonna you know wanna rotate and things like that so, so uh, it's mainly just controlling the behavior and not the physical location now this side this menu right here is what that's for it's 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 controlling the physical location and where it is relative to what so even if we just look at the first few things right here distance that's immediately like a physical location we can control the distance of something with respect to something else we can control the angle of something with respect to something else so so it, it should start to become clear that this is this is to control where the part belongs physically and this menu is to control how that part is going to behave. Those are two separate things. So let's let's begin with the simple pin connection. And again, that's a behavior thing. It's going to behave like a pin. Okay. So when we click pin, um, and and you know right now you might be confused. Well, what's happening? There's not. Why is it? Okay. Good. All right. So when when you when you click pin, you can you. You can go to placement, and these are the options that you want to work with. Because uh, once you get used to things, you know you can just start clicking surfaces. Like, like right now, it's highlighting the surfaces, and I know which surfaces I need to select to do things. But since you're just starting out, you need to you should go to placement, and you know you're gonna see the options that you need to work with. And right now, it's asking me for axis alignment, and I don't see any axis because I haven't turned off. So I'm gonna turn on the axes. I'm gonna select. An axis from the part, and then I'm going to select an axis from the main assembly. But uh, in in this one right here, they're ordered in that manner as well. So it's asking me to select the component from uh, from the part that I brought in, and this is to select a component in the assembly. So if I just click them, I can select them. And and right now, if I hover over the the main assembly, it's not letting me select anything because I'm saying I want to select things from a component. So see right here, it's when I hover over the part, I can select things, but when I hover over the main assembly, I can't select anything. Um, and and the and the inverse of that, I guess, is if I if I select assembly components only, it's gonna let me select things from the main assembly, and not let me select anything from the part. That's just degree of freedom. Don't worry about that. Uh, I, I go over this because this tiny detail helps because when you have large assemblies and you don't you just need to modify a few things you can you know come in here and say instead of having this particular assembly connection use this other assembly connection and and you can just modify that one thing instead of having to remove uh, an entire part but you know that'll make sense later on 
I probably just confused you a lot more. So, you know, if I did, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, but let's begin. Uh, we're going to select the axes from the component, and then we're going to select the axes from this. What happened to our part? Oh my god. Uh, that, that, that might happen. It's okay. We're, we're, we're just going to click our window right here. It probably just disappeared. Okay, there we go. Uh, that, that, that tends to happen. Uh, and, and so we selected the axes, and now uh, it, it should only be able to rotate. But see, it's going a little crazy right here. It's, it, 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 can, it can rotate, and it can go backwards and inwards for some reason. Uh, and that's like strange. And that's going to change once we add a translation. Uh, and, and we can just select surfaces. We could have selected datum planes for this as well if we wanted to. Uh, but I'm going to select surfaces. And I'm going to select the surface from the part that's going to be coincident with the with the assembly right here. So this surface is going to uh, remain in the same planar uh, area or in the same plane as this, this surface from the assembly. And I'm going to hit OK. Uh, and, and you know when I click and drag again click alt and um, left click while you're holding down control and alt uh, you can drag this and you know this thing is rotating now um, let me just go back to again if you wanna it's it's pretty much like the parts if you wanna edit uh, the constraints you can go right click on the part from the model tree and uh, click edit definition uh, few things I want to go over again when we were making these uh, these uh, behavioral connections they kind of work side by side with the physical because if, if you think about it a pin connection is something in, in Creo that's gonna allow things to rotate but physically it needs to be constrained to an axis right so even though it's allowed to rotate that's the that's the behavior side of things it needs a physical uh, location uh, so that's going to be the axes. Same thing with the translation. The coincident it means essentially, you know, it's in the same plane as something else, and it shows you the things that are in the same plane as well from the from the part. It's it's uh, showing you a little arrow right here, and from the main assembly, it's showing you an arrow right here and saying these two things are coincident. That's what coincident means. You know, they're in the same plane. Um, I'm probably sounding really redundant, but I, I just really want to hit the points home that. It's, it just, these are the basics and it's going to get really complicated for you later on once you uh, start working with big assemblies so you should have strong foundations um, but that's that's all you need after that um, and then you can just hit OK and it works um, let it load uh, and, and before I end this video I want you to pay attention to this little side right here uh, if I click I think it's going to make those circles uh, okay, so it's yellow right now, uh, and it doesn't really that doesn't really matter too much. But uh, if I hit Control G, it turned green. Or I could have just hit Regenerate right here. Sometimes it doesn't let you save assemblies, or you might see some kind of error and you freak out that why isn't it letting me save? So let's just do that right now. If I hit Save and I hit OK, see right here it produced. It, it's kind of an error, but it's not really. It doesn't really matter. It's just asking you to regenerate it, so just regenerate it, and then you can save it just fine like this. And see, there was no error. So just keep an eye out on this, because you know you're gonna end up in a situation where your assembly is not gonna move at all, and there's gonna be different symbols that you can interact with here. So keep an eye on it. It's like a status indicator of some sort. Uh, if it's green, it's good. Yellow, you might be doing something. Well, not really something bad, but you know just just regenerate it and see what's happening and then there's gonna be another symbol that you're gonna come across that you're gonna kinda despise uh, that that symbol usually means nothing's gonna move uh, but that's that's it for this video it's a simple pin connection and uh, just mess around with it and in the next video we'll mess around with more connections and see what we can do uh,